So we were just a small town. You know, growing up we had no power at all. But it's a place we loved. Well, we didn't have to go hunting because the deer would come right, right in the field. It's just a matter of waiting to one come out, right? And you can only eat so much. Same as the fish, you could only eat so much. The early years on the ranch were, to me, were excellent years. Ordinary floods we had in those days, that's before the dam was ever thought of at that time. Before dam, we had a completely different system and we had a completely different way of living in this, in this basin. Dams created reservoirs that changed the way we live and work around those major water bodies. To me, it was never going to happen. It was like a, uh, when a television first came out and they said we'd be seeing pictures in our living rooms. And the concept of that was just beyond me and that's the way flooding the valley was. Well, without question, again, the, um, the imposition of the uh, dams on the Columbia River uh, deeply impacted the indigenous peoples within the Arrow Lakes uh, territory um, to the point where um, many of the indigenous peoples were forced out of the area. We have archaeological sites that are underwater, you know, again, our history forever changed so that, you know, access to ancient villages, ancient places, you know, they don't exist anymore because they're, they're, they're underwater because of a dam, because of a relationship that we have with the, the nation state south of the 49th. The whole people were moved right out of the valley and um, record made so that they almost didn't exist no more. The other thing is non-consultation. When the first agreement came, Indian Affairs was the one that negotiated, said no, there's no effect to um, First Nations up here. And, uh, and we had no say, none of our leaders had any say at that time. When those lands were flooded, mm -hmm. they did not consider what damage it would do to the native people's um, the villages, to the native people's um, sweat lodges and they did not do it by consulting the people. There were burial grounds which the, I know people protested loud and clear but they were not heard. I think at the, at the time everything was done as well as it could be done under the circumstances. As I said before, there's no way to force somebody out of this home and have them be happy about it. I guess environmental values weren't as important then as, as they are now, and nor was the community engagement, uh, talking to people to find out the needs of the community. That was not as important back then. What was important in the 60s was, was really building the province and getting a good infrastructure in place. 30 years ago, the people didn't get that opportunity to speak, and it was important that they're involved in deciding what was appropriate compensation, what was appropriate return of funds to the region. If the treaty were to be negotiated, the environmental issues will probably be some of the main things on the table that weren't there 45 or 50 years ago. Of course, the biggest benefit, uh, I think, of the dams is flood control for areas below, like uh, actually Cascar Trail in the Canadian side of the border, and certainly a big benefit for the uh, United States. Some 50% of the hydro requirements of the lower mainland come from uh, the Columbia Basin. Well, we didn't want to sell, but reluctantly, my parents said, well, what are you going to do? The talk about what was going to happen to the valley before that, yeah, they did have public meetings, a few. They didn't listen to the people. The people that are affected here, the ones that are really affected, will never forget it. I'm a Shuswap Indian, so basically being a Shuswap Indian, um, Salmon is the basis and the backbone of our culture. Our reverence for salmon is very, very high. Stories relate to how many of the fish were based on the fact that the natives used to walk across their backs. It was that, it was that uh, big of a run. Um, there is no more salmon now in the uh, headwaters of Columbia or even anywhere in the Canadian side of the Columbia. 
and the fact that they're gone now for 70 years has had a very, very drastic impact on my people. There was a time when the salmon just didn't come. Well, of course, that's when the Cooley Dam was put in in Washington State. So before the dam, the salmon actually came right to the headwaters of the Columbia. That's where they started from. When Cooley Dam was built, salmon could no longer come up the river. Talk about a devastation to the people. This next time when we do it, let's do it right and let's include the ecosystem. Because as, as I said before, it's not just gonna benefit us. It, it will benefit everybody up and down the river. As we move forward into the future in an effort to renew the Columbia River Treaty and address those impacts, uh, mitigate those impacts, we must ensure that, um, that it, it's inclusive and that all interests are taken into consideration.